The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians, on this 30th day of October. One more day to go to get that monthly candle wrapped up. And so far, all I can say is uh, there have just been a series of higher highs and higher lows. That's very good. But, and I'll go through this now in detail. Let's look at this Dow chart. On the left is the daily chart. In the middle is the weekly chart. On the right is the monthly chart. These two time, these three time frames, tell um, an interesting story. Why? Because there's been a stalling formation. One has to deal with from the seven, from the September 27, 3006 high in the Dow. Uh, that was on the 12th of September. You've got a down channel, this little green and red dashed channel, I call it the chapter wave, inside track and repellent zone. And now for three sessions, we've been above that. Well, we, we dipped into it, but basically we've been trading, most of the trading is above that. The MACD is not anywhere close to as strong as it was when it was making the high of the 12th of September. The stochastic is at 85%, also not as strong as it was, but 85% is very good. So on a daily chart pattern, what we're looking at is all these Ds, let me pull this across here to show you, all the way from April, you make a peak D, the fourth highest peak in the Chapman wave, and um, you get 26,695. And you come down from the 23rd of April way down to the June 3rd low, where we actually went along that exact day. So you go from 26,695, where we shorted the day before the top, and we went along right at the bottom at 24,701. Then it ran up, and what did it run to? You see this jet wave inside track repellent zone, it went right there to peak A, pulls back, and then breaks out sharply. That was a break, a real break to the upside. And it does a, this kind of um, wedge formation expansion, goes to 26,905 level a month. Uh, that was on June the 20, something like 23rd or so, pulls back. And then it goes to peak C, and it has a rising inside track repellent zone. Lo and behold, it gaps up, and it goes right to a doji high on the 16th of July, 27,398. We were lucky we went short seven points from the top. And it comes down and makes a trough E at 25,339. Remember, on the way down, we do the notations, but they have not as much importance as on the way up. On the way down, we're using the moving averages in a different way, a very important way to be able to give us signals. Not that it isn't important. Look, that was a peak F at the low. Uh, on the 6th of uh, 3rd of June. This is a peak E, a trough E, I'm sorry, a trough on the way down, on the 15th of August at 25,339. So then it rallies, and it goes to another D. I just missed the following day uh, for the subscribers. We just missed shorting. We did short a little later on, and that worked out nicely. And then it went down to from 27,306. In a left side, right side price time match, it couldn't get to the 27,398 in the, uh, the, it went close in the same amount of time, but not in price. And in, in, in time, it was one day early, and in price, it was, um, what is it, 90, 92 points short of making a new high, and boom, it comes down from that peak D. Goes to the low of the, at peak trough C, at 25,743 on the 3rd of October. <clears throat> Rallies very nicely and goes to what I call the peak C1, C2, which has the same connotation as a, um, a peak D. If it's very close, it can't be way off, it has to be very close, and you can call it very similar to the pattern, especially if you've got the technicals giving you that little bump, but it just didn't quite make 
the nine points that it needed to go over 27,120. So it goes peak C1, C2. <clears throat> At that point, <clears throat> excuse me, we did go short the Dow. <clears throat> we got stopped out a couple of days ago. It was a good move, but then we got stopped out <clears throat> for, for a loss, uh, less than a one-point loss. <clears throat> and now, what have we got? We've got another peak D. What's, uh, what's the difference? Well, the peak D before had huge difference between the nine period exponential moving average, the green line, and the 14 period moving average, both in September and last July. And I believe it was the same in April. Uh, it was closer, but it was pretty much the same thing in April. This is different, <clears throat> which says that the, the stochastic is at 85% good, the MACD is good, but the moving averages are still very close. They're not breaking down right here. They're doing quite nicely. So sometimes I have to use a chap wave notation to be ahead of the game. That's the timing tool. Now, what I'm talking about when I'm talking moving averages, I'm not talking a timing tool. Sometimes it'll coincide exactly with a stochastic turning around, just like it did exactly at the bottom on the um, 3rd of October. <clears throat> I actually missed that. I waited a little late. Uh, but we did, we did uh, have long positions. We only got long positions right now and one short position. So the bias for me, stock-wise, is more towards the, the long side. But index-wise, I think we're getting close to some kind of a pull, pullback. But that's what I'm trying to point out here, that to have it four times in a row will be so unusual <clears throat> that uh, I, I'm prepared that I could be wrong. Here's where I'm wrong. If at 2 o'clock, between 2 and 2.45, regardless of what the initial impact is, market spikes high and then pulls back or drops and then pull, comes back to un unchanged. <clears throat> if after 2.45, the Dow is actually more than 60 points higher, I would say that's really good, a good response. And if it's more than 40 or 50 points lower, I'd say, you know what, there's a good chance we've started that digestive phase. Now, one of the reasons why I say it's a little different is that in the context of the MACD, the weekly chart, the MACD right now is flat. It is really close to trying to cross positive for the first time in a while since it made that high back in September. So uh, was that September that I'm talking about? Yeah, since it made that high in September at a peak A. And now I'm looking at it, and now what, what I want you to point out is that in the Chapman Wing methodology, look, you've got... The, the, the technicals show that the Chapman Wave inside track in the daily chart is turning down. It says that in the weekly chart, it's turning down. But wait a minute. The larger context is the monthly, and that's up. And we have just nicked the, the pink starting point of the Chapman Wave inside track, repellent zone, lower trend line, and the up channel is way up there, the green line, and that's that. That is right at the 27,500 level. So that's the reason why I don't want to get too carried away on the short side because a lot of the technicals are holding well or actually very positive. And now I'll talk more about the other indices. We'll be back because it may, I may as well do a technical thing today because at 245, whatever I'm saying now could be completely different at 245. I'll be right back. Dow's down 10 points. SP's down 2 points. Right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Everyone, we're back, and we've got, uh, let's see, we've got Mike in Clearwater. Uh, Mike, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm well. I can just, I haven't been to Clearwater for, uh, what, about seven years, maybe? <clears throat> Maybe it's seven, maybe it's eight. Uh, I bet, oh, yeah, I haven't been since uh, just soon after the debacle down there with the, with the housing crisis. So it must be, yeah, maybe nine years. Um, must have changed a lot. Must be a lot of new buildings and things there. Well, ho housing has definitely come back here. Real estate's great. Uh, That's great. We have global warming, though. It's 90 degrees today. Oh, you got 90 degrees, yeah. We're not too yeah. bad here. But uh, yeah. we're he we're headed for the for the south side of the weather. We we're on the way down for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, Mike, you wanted to look at U.S. Steel. Okay. Do you have a position at all? I do not. I'm looking for an entry point. So, what I wanted to say to you is this: um, I did a quick little uh, analysis that's different to what I usually do um, a, a moment ago. And um, because this morning it was on my radar, and the steel stocks are kind of holding okay right here. And it, uh, in the den, uh, I'm told uh, steel reports tomorrow after the bell. And the way it's acting, especially with this monthly candle about to close with a doji type candle. So that means after the bell, which means Whatever happens on Friday, it begins November's candle. If we get this little doji candle from today, because it kind of holds steady while it's waiting for the report, and there's a good report, and then all of a sudden it pops up and it doesn't have to do anything much, but it just needs to break. It's at 11.85. The, the high of three days ago was about 12.52, I think it was, 12.56. If we can get into by Monday, with a November can monthly, I'm not talking even weekly or daily, I'm talking about the monthly candle. If we can start to push into the 1280 or 1310 area, all of a sudden I've got something that's really unique in the annals of monthly charts. You can go through hundreds and hundreds of monthly charts and you will see every once in a while the exact low after a, a pretty serious decline will be where you get 
the tiniest little plus sign. And look, it's a doji candle where it opens and closes at about the same price. And it has just a little wick up and a little wick down. Looks like a plus sign. And that becomes the turning point. And I'll, I'll show you something that's very interesting. I don't know if you can see my charts right now, but if you can have a chance uh, later on, have a look at the monthly chart. Go to the January of 2016 low. This is the monthly. Well, November had the tiniest little doji candle, and the low was $6.80. Then the next low of January of 2016 was 615 so it goes, I mean, that's a big percentage, 680 to 615, so I'm going from 68 to 61. But look what happened. That was what I call Chapman Wave Silent Doji, and then you got this massive turn to the upside. Now, I need to point out that it had come from 46.55, the high in, I think it was September, yep, September of 2014 at 46.55. So I wanted to point out that every once in a while, uh, there's another one, 70.95 was the high back in uh, 2010, comes all the way down, and then a pretty important low was made like two bars after um, the actual low of 1580, two bars, eight, it's got this tiny little doji, and then it starts to rally, and it goes from 15.80 up to 46.55. Then it comes down, then it comes down to the to the doji low that I was talking about. So if this particular it's not small enough, but it's it's a it's still a pretty small doji. If this becomes a reversal candle and we can survive with the trade war, etc., and we can survive without taking out the, the, the low of um, right here, the low of a few days ago of what was it, eight, nine point ninety-three. I would then say this is the first time that you're looking at the chance that still could have a nice recovery. I can't say what the upside is because we haven't even got the turn yet. But that, so that's the kind of thing I suspect that you would like to be looking at because it could be a position that you put on now and it could, it could become a core position if the, the earnings tomorrow, it gaps up and then it just doesn't look back for a while. So I'm going to suggest to you I don't know what your risk parameter is. What would you do if you bought it at $11.88, but this had, I'm just saying the potential. I'm not sure yet where we're done because I'm going to talk about the actual pattern that I'm looking at in a moment in the daily chart. But if I said to you, nibble here at 11.88, what would your stop be since it's just like a little starter, tiny starter position? What's your risk factor there? What, what would you do? I have a high risk factor. Let's just say that. Okay. So if that's the case, then I'm going to say, look, at $11.90, if it just completely misses, I wouldn't be surprised that even if it gaps down to $11.20, or oh, it's just so bad that it goes under 11, if that's a 10% risk. I wouldn't be surprised at some point in the next few weeks, you get another chance to just get out of that position um, with a very small loss. Because I, I, it'll have to be so bad that, I mean, how long can you, you still come out with bad news? It's been doing that since the high that was made back at 40, 40 you know, in the 46 area back in, what was it? It was 47.64 in March of 2018. And not one quarter have they come out with anything with good news. So there's a better chance now that the, the news is at least ameliorated, that it doesn't have to be, you know, as long as it's not awful, I think it'll at least hold up. So I'm going to say to you, if you have that kind of risk, as a core position potential, start a position here at 1188, 1190. You know, I wouldn't even fuss over 15 or 20 cents right now because this is just a start. It's like a feeler position, a pilot light position that says, hey, by next week this time, I'll have a much better feel if it's now gone up quite a bit. I, I can start thinking of adding. If it drops sharply, I'll have to kind of get out of this position at some point. But I am prepared to take a 10% 10 10 risk on this position. Something okay. like that. Now, if you have okay. a much less tolerable, uh, uh, you know, if you're, if you're not amenable to, uh, to taking too much risk, I would even say to you, you know what? If you use options, why don't you buy yourself a $12 option? Go out, uh, this is go out to January, 
and, and just sit with it. Okay? I'm, I'm sure you'll make money on that option, um, but your risk is really what we're talking about. And if you're absolutely wrong, you will take a risk of, of maybe a, a dollar ten, maybe uh, 90, 90, 90, 90 cents. So it'll be uh, maybe uh, $90. Oh, it depends on how many positions you want to take. But I'm just saying to you, it depends on your risk. But if because earnings are coming out, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they're not as bad as usual. I mean, they've really, if they haven't been able to get their books right after all this time, then, they, then it's really a sad case. But I'm just saying, risk reward, looking at it. And you know what, if you want to hold on, I wanted to show you something in the daily chart that I, is very fascinating. It's called the Chapman Wave Restart. Do you have a moment? Yes, sure. Okay, then we're going to have you hold on. Uh, we've got Mike in Clearwater, Florida, holding on. And we're looking at the daily chart of U.S. Steel. X is the symbol, trading 1188, down 35 cents. Dow's up seven, S&P's up one and a half. We like it. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So we're on right now. We've got Mike in Clearwater, Florida, and we're looking at uh, the steel stocks besides uh, US, uh, X, well, U.S. Steel, which is X as a symbol. So AKS, uh, AK Steel reports after the bell, and they're actually looking a little bit technically better than steel. And Nucor, NUE, uh, reported in September wasn't too great, but it's actually a nicer chart pattern. So the question here is, 
We'll give a steel. Look at that. That's a much better chart pattern. New core steel trading at 54.15. AKS is a very tiny stock. I wouldn't be able to do that. Recommend it over over the um, uh, right now in the show because I need to do a little more work on that. But now I'm going to show something very interesting about steel. The the daily chart has made a series of cup formations, but it has made lower highs and lower lows. But this is what I call a Chapman Wave uh, restart formation. It actually made a full peak E, the rally that went into the high in August, and then it plummeted down from about the 15, almost 16 area, down to about 1040. Then it ran up and it actually made a peak D, and it started a Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, which is now sharply above, and that's now kind of support in the 11 area. But what's interesting is that the MACD has improved. The stochastic is actually at 86%. And if there is a good earnings report tomorrow, that will flatten out. And that will be the first real sign to say that every one of these um, attempts at uh, a buy signal to a buy mode has, has succeeded out of the one, two, three, four times since July. You've got two full buy modes because they went to a D or higher. And you've got two failures, and yet you're still holding very nicely above, let's say, the 10 level, even though it went to 993. So this is the first opportunity I see where U.S. Steel has a chance to actually break to the upside and turn this whole area of uh, $11 to 1050 into some kind of support. So that's what I wanted to say. And, and the reason why I mentioned it is that if the MACD – which is good, it does the same thing as it's done before, you could turn down here. But the stochastic, this would be the first time if it can last all the way at 86%. If by Monday it's still in the 85 or higher percentage area, that's saying, you know what, on the shorter term, some of the technicals have really improved. So that's why I'm saying, yep, take it. I, if, if you're leaning towards buying U.S. steel and you've been wanting to buy it for a while, and now you're thinking this is probably the opportunity, I'd say start a position at 11.96. If the earnings come out and it shoots up, I got a feeling from, that it's going to be market conditions that would drag it down, but the price itself will say, hey, thank God I'm free of the 10s. I'm trying to get into the 11s and then the 12s. That'll be the first time it has a chance to do that and it'll help the weekly chart, which is just slowly improving. So yeah, I'm saying, if you have a slightly higher tolerance for risk at this particular point, I, I'd go for it. Um, and then if, if you've made a mistake, I wouldn't just panic. I'd say, OK, I'll, I'll get out of it. There will be a bounce at some point, even if it's not a bounce to your entry point. But you just need patience. As long as it's a smallish position that you're really comfortable with, just don't do anything that makes you lose sleep. Thank you. So good luck. Let me know how it goes. I will. Thanks, Joe. We'll be watching it closely. Thank you for Thanks, calling, Mike. Dave. Appreciate it. Thank you. Folks, now the Dow is up 15. I, I wanted to go through a couple of things. Look, the S&P, I will not ignore the fact that you're at all-time highs because once levels at highs have been broken, there is no ceiling except for what our imagined, which is written down, but it's still an imagined thing because the chart doesn't know it, the trend line resistances. So the S&P has gone to a peak F. There is a chance that this is a Chapman Wave instant restart because the MACD is still good. The stochastic actually is very good at 94%. So if we start to see the high that was made, oh, I didn't update it. Let me just tell you what the high was yesterday. The high was 3047.87. Let me just write that in here. 3047.87, 4.87. If, perchance, this off, late this afternoon, you're looking at the S&P and it just loves the news and you're breaking into the 3051 area, it's not a big deal, it's only 15 points higher than where we are right now, so it's up 15 points. If it does it, I will not consider that that's a G. I have to say, because it's the end of the month and you're still going to get end of the month buying tomorrow, that there's a good chance that you've recycled and that you will go higher into, into early next week, and then we'll have to assess why. Because this trend line resistance in the weekly chart, the rising trend line resistance, has, this week it has 
The high that was made yesterday of 3047, just in that 3047, 3048 area, that's the dash tre pink trend line, rising trend line resistance. And then the, the channel that I've drawn has much stronger resistance in, that'll be next week, and that'll be at 3070. And after that, you're broken out. And that says the monthly chart is so clearly in leg B that any major, major turn down has tremendous support in the 2914 to 2864 area in the monthly chart, which has been, which has held the 14 period moving average every time we pull back since the big breakout in January to the upside. So that's the upside. Now on the downside, if later today and by tomorrow's close, the, the last day of October, you're actually trading at 3017 or lower, that's the nine period moving average, it says, okay, now be a little careful because we could be starting the rollover. Now, what do I mean by the rollover? Let me show you. In the Dow, we've had this rectangle formation after the high was made, and it lasted 10 days from the April one before the moving averages broke down, 13 days in July before the moving averages broke down, 14 uh, sessions from the high that was made September the 16th, Sorry, I'm sorry, the September the 12th before it broke down. There's one big difference, and I have to say it's a big difference. Why? Because from the starting point here, even though this is the ninth, I believe it's the ninth or the tenth uh, session since the high that was made back at 27.120 on the 15th of October, we have now twice gone above that. So the big question for me is hey, wait a minute. Do I only start this right now, the rectangle formation? Everything looked like it was a perfect match. To go four times would be so crazy. I haven't seen any any technique that has four times consistently giving you the exact perfect turnaround, up or down. Uh, maybe it's happened. I just can't recall. Or fan. Three times, yes. Four times? That would be absolutely unusual. So that says to me, keep in mind that the Nine period moving average hasn't even come close to crossing. That's the nine period. Hasn't the green nine period moving average hasn't even come close to crossing under the black 14 period moving average. To do that, you would have to probably see the Dow at 26,850 or lower to even start to get the green line to begin moving lower. And then you'd have to smash to the downside straight after that. So um, all I can say is we've got our little ducks in order. We've got them in place. And let's see how it unfolds at uh, 2.45 today. And um, we'll know if the Dow is up uh, 60 or more. That's good. If it's down 40 or more. It says, hey, starting to roll over. Be careful. I'll be right back. Dow is now up 11. S&P is unchanged. We're going to be pretty unchanged as we go into the 2 o'clock announcement, I'm sure. I'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So, uh... I'd like to do this. Uh, oh, first of all, a question about McDonald's. Um, uh, I guess, Steve, I'll, I'll get to it just in a moment. I just wanted to mention, because I'm, I'm liable to forget and I want to talk about it today. Um, so tomorrow tomorrow night or Friday, there might be, there might be um, actually, I'm not sure it's might anymore. It's almost sure that it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen, I think. Uh, the, the impeachment process is going to go ahead. Well, with Clinton, Back in 1998, what we saw was the Dow had come off a low of 73.79, and that was in September of 1998. You remember there was that big smash. I don't know if that was that, what was it, long something? Um, what was it? The overseas fund. Uh, there was a, there was a smash, and that uh, impacted the the Dow. The Dow went from nine four twelve in July to a low of September low of seven three nine. That's a, that's a pretty big move, and then eighteen twenty percent. And then what happened? The Clinton impeachment hearings in Dece in December. Yeah, and then it rallied up to about nine thousand three ninety. So it made a higher high than that high that was made earlier on in July. So it goes high, but that whole month had a, had a high and a low of right here. So this is December of 1998, high of 9390 and a low of 8610. So the impeachment hearings go underway, right? They had the first initial uh, meetings and then find that the decision was made to go ahead. Well. You got a very choppy, we even went higher. It even went up to 9,759 in January and a low of 8,994, it's called 9,000. And then in February, 9,025 was the low and 8,611 was the high. And then they were concluded. And remember, uh, it was voted not to impeach. And the market then went from the low that was made in September of 1998 at 7379. Let's go to the low that was made at about 8610. That's 8610. And from 8610, when the whole thing was going on, you ran up to 11,749, 3,000 points. And I would say it's, uh, what is that, a 30, about a 42% gain, something like that. So you go all the way to a peak E, to the January top, and that was it. Now, I've always, I've always been fascinated by this. 
The market in 2000, remember the election was in 2000. So the market in 2000 went from 11,749 down to the December uh, 2000 low. Uh, uh, that was January. So the December 2000 low was 10,299, but you had already been down to 9,656. Remember 9,656? That's kind of where you were when those impeachment hearings were underway. So look what happened. You ran up sharply, and then you pulled back all year, and then you went to the low that was made right here uh, on in October of 2002 at 7,197. Let just type that in. 7,197, 7197, and this is 10,002. Yeah, because I think the semiconductors made their low in, in March, or the S&P did. There was a little mix-up there. One did, one didn't. Now, isn't that interesting? So all the way through 2000, I don't remember hearing the press saying that they're going to hand over the to the next president a, a catastrophe in the making with the dot-com bubble, because remember the NDX had an absolute smash. Hardly ever did you hear them talking about it. But when um, the market tanked during the Bush era, Obama, for six years or so, kept talking about the Bush catastrophe. So I'm just fascinated with the way the things work. It's just it's the way the media reports things. You just got to accept that's the way it is. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of intrigued. And you remember, my, 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 my template here is thinking about 1920s and that you went through three Republicans and then the second Republican handed over to the third Republican who was just handed a, an absolute time bomb with the uh, crash of 1929. So this is going to be very interesting uh, how this plays out because... <sighs> I have to tell you, um, I don't know if the plan should be to talk about impeachment. Just move on. Talk about what the next candidates will do as president. That's the most important thing. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that because that's not that's that's. I'm talking market now, and that suddenly goes into politics. I don't want to use this as a political agenda. Uh, I'm not couldn't care about the agenda. I'm just interested in what the market does. Now, McDonald's is trading up 220, having made a low. So look at this. 194 was the law of, of importance in the Chapman Wave automated support. It went right through that, but now it's trying to get back at 194.82. Two cents higher, four cents higher, three cents higher. Um, and that monthly, the weekly chart says, uh oh, 226.55 was a terrible resistance area. And the weekly, the daily was right there in the whole 220, 223 area. And the actual high was, I think, 221 something. I'll check in a minute. And the monthly chart doesn't have its now open territory if we can go higher, but now it's got a lot of support levels that were once resistance. So now the question is, and I'm not sure if you're looking to buy it. Um, uh, right there, where was the question? Just disappeared. Let's do that again. Um, Oh, I lost the question. Oh, there, AK Steve. McDonald's, please. Um, so when I'm looking at this, I'm saying this is a nice two-day two turnaround candle. But that's all it is. I think from the weekly chart and the monthly chart, peak D in the monthly chart, I wouldn't mess around with that peak E in the uh, weekly chart at 221.93 trading right now. I think, yes, as a bounce. If you're looking at this as a trade, this is another another uh, situation, regardless of what the Fed does today. I treat McDonald's as an option play. We're in, we're just about to begin November. I'd even do it as a November. When's November closing? So it's, it's Friday. One, two, three, on the 15th, that's a little too soon. I'd like to have a December. Yeah, I'd go for December the 20th. I'd buy an option. I wouldn't look to buy a call. Oh, you're looking to short a buy. I didn't ask you what you're looking to do. Um, oh, look, as a trade, I can see it as a, as a trade of 195. 200 is the 200-period uh, exponential moving average and the 14-period moving average. 197 is the 9. I can see a bounce. I wouldn't be buying this. I would only play it in an option where I know exactly what I can lose. And there's a really good chance of a good percentage gain and also a chance to lose everything. Now, why do I say that? Because 
the monthly chart has gone right through the nine period moving average and it's already gone through the 14 period moving average but it's now above that i suspect that it's going to be a process now and i'll draw it in there's a chance that mcdonald's has some kind of a rebound and it looks something like a dreaded h pattern the lowercase h pattern with a chance that it could even go lower so be careful if you want to trade it that's fine but treat it only as a trade at 194 if you want to buy it now even before the fed statements um, I would still have a two, no more than a 2% stop, and I'd have only a trading position. Now, this could be the low. I think it's a low and not the low. I'll be right back. Dow's at 25, is and down one and a quarter. Be right back. Dow's at Chapman Tiger Conditions. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Months, timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to work workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige. A living a primal lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So um, I, I have a webinar coming. It'll be up today on the front page of TFNN. Um, I have a webinar coming up in uh, November. Later on, uh, November, I shouldn't remember the, the, the exact date. I think it was November. Yep, November, Wednesday, November the 20th. And I'm really looking forward to it. I've been asked many times now if I would go through some of the Chapman Wave techniques that have really stood us in real good stead. Um, I will do that. It's going to be a special one. And of course, I'll be talking about stocks that we're looking at for 2020, uh, just as we've been doing all the time. What sectors do I think are going to work, et cetera? And of course, with the Fed and, and tomorrow's, uh, whatever news that comes out tomorrow, we'll see what happens. Um, so that's that. T Tesla, the question here is, uh, Basil, I have a friend who has a Tesla, uh, who bought Tesla. I have a friend who has a Tesla. He has a friend who bought Tesla. I told him to hold on. He wanted to know what to do. What should, you know, I'm just going to say, hold on for now. It's at a peak E. It should be pulling back. But if he's been holding all this time, I don't think I'd change that right now. But 
Let's just do this either tomorrow or Friday. We'll have technical Friday, and this could be one of those stocks we look at technically. I'm also looking at CRBP. Um, that's one that we spoke about yesterday, trying to get a little more information on it. It's pulling back today a little bit. So that's it. Now, let's just do this. I'm going to go to the, the quickly before we wrap up. You're going to go to Steve, uh, Steve, Wednesday. You're going to Steve, you're going to Dave, then you're going to Tom. And I'll be back tomorrow. But let's just look at this. The Dow is up 23, <clears throat> holding really well off the potential peak D yesterday with a slightly Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal. That doesn't work unless within a day or two you don't take out the high, but you go down sharply. You either fill a gap or you go underneath a key moving average. That's why I say 29,960s. That's going to be important in the next two days to go under it. If you don't, this could be one of those situations where this particular time uh, you've got so such a mixed market in the Dow. Even now, as I'm talking to you, you've got uh, you know you've got McDonald's up a dollar thirty-eight. You've got um, CVS down a dollar thirty-nine. It's just a real mixed market at this exact moment. So let's see what happens. All I can say is Dow holding plus sixty or more after two forty-five. I think that's very good action. Down minus forty or more. And I say, okay, timeout is probably right now. Just keep it simple. Don't get excited. We've still got long positions that are doing well. And we've got a short position, and we'll see how that plays out. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. Good luck.